How, what, what sort of framing we got going on here? I want to see what sort of movement I got. We're, we're, we're wide. We're going wide. Zoom in. Slowly. Just, just really creepily. We recently made a video about bikes that can do more and go more places and that sort of thing. It seemed to be pretty popular. A lot of people seem to be interested in that. And this is another bike that can just do more, but in another way. You know, we were talking about bikes that can handle different terrain. And this bike can handle all sorts of different terrain, but it can also carry more. This area right here is a cargo area. It can carry up to 130 pounds can carry kids, you can carry cargo, you know, hence the name. But it's also not all that different from a regular electric bike in that it's the same length overall, but the wheelbase is a little bit longer because it has smaller wheels than its kind of brother bike or sister bike or whatever you want to call it, the Charger. This is the Risa Muir Multi-Charger. That addition to the name of their Charger, the Multi, it just can do a multitude of different things or multiple different things. I don't know. Okay, I have to apologize because we got to add in a use case scenario. Somebody felt a little left out in, in thinking about it. This can also carry adults, small adults, not very big ones. It's 130 pounds. So I've actually ridden on it. Don't tell anybody about 200 pounds. It could probably handle it, but it's not really made for that. So just keep that in mind. The point is it can do more. You wouldn't really find me trying to ride on the back of a normal electric bike, but I tried on this one. So the multi-charger was initially introduced in like 2018, 2019. I actually did a review of the bike with Court from Electric Bike Review. We did a bunch of videos together and that was kind of a cool one. But since then they've made a bunch of updates. Now we did that virtual preview earlier last year. Now that we got it in person, I want to just kind of give you some other details. Now it has a updated motor on the bike. It's with the Bosch Generation 4 CX as well as the speed motor. This particular one has a speed motor on it. You have different drivetrain options. So it has the roll-off hub as one option as well as Enviolo, which they call the Vario version. And then they have the standard derailleur and cassette version, which is called Touring. And they have one other version called Light, which is basically the Touring version with just some slightly lower spec components for those that want, you know, just more budget option, don't need all those kind of high performance things. They have two different frame styles. This is the standard frame. It's available in 47 centimeter as well as 51 centimeter. That's another update for this year. Standard frames just available in the black color and you can get the racks in the contrasting curry color, which this one has, or you can also get them in a black color as well. They have another version of this bike. It's called the Multi-Charger Mixed. Everything else is more or less the same with the exception that the top tube goes down a little bit lower, makes it easier to get on and off of the bike. That bike is available in white as well as black. And Risa Muir says that the size starts somewhere around 5'3 and goes upwards around 6'6 on the larger frame. And I think it all really depends on your inseam. I mean, one of the limitations is the suspension seat post. You can only put the saddle down so much. Now, if you were to remove the suspension seat post, you can get this down lower. But keep in mind, if you have the passenger kit, like the handlebars that attach here, it's gonna end up that you have to have the saddle up a little bit higher. So keep those details in mind. But really, it depends on your inseam and everything like that. If you need help, with always happy to help people through that sort of scenario. But those are most of the updates that we see for this year. I think they do some different tire options. They also have a different front luggage rack available. This has the kind of standard rack, but they have a slightly larger cargo version, which is kind of cool. The handlebar cockpit setup is new and different. So the standard display that comes on the bike is called the Purion, and that comes with the standard stem and everything like that. But if you wanted to have one of the upgraded displays, either the Kiox, the Nyon, which this one has, or the smartphone hub, you're gonna get the cockpit stem here. And it's really beneficial because it's adjustable. So at the moment, this is more in a slightly forward position, kind of more sporty. It's probably ideal if you're riding in rougher terrain, you have a bit more control over the bike. But if you're wanting a more upright, more comfort position, you can adjust the stem and kind of pull it up closer to you, which will give you a more upright seating position. But just keep in mind that you wanna keep your weight balanced between the wheels. So if you end up sitting too far upright, you might not have as much weight on the front wheel, especially if you're carrying heavier stuff up front so you want to try to balance those details in order to gain optimum 
handling on the bike. Really, I think in simple terms, what I think of is, you know, somebody wants a bike that rides like a normal electric bike, but it's capable of doing more, capable of carrying more. So the multi-charger was initially introduced several years ago, and I think that that's probably one of the more common use scenarios that we found. People that want to be able to ride on-road, off-road, ride some rougher terrain, not feel like they're riding a cargo bike so much. Risa Muir, the brand that makes this bike, they actually build the bikes in Germany. They have many different models, and this model is an extension of their Charger model, or more specifically, the current version is called the Charger 3. And basically, it just has an extended rear end and slightly smaller wheels than the Charger. The Charger has 27.5 inch wheels, this one has 26 inch wheels, and that enables the bike to be more or less the same length, but still have a slightly longer wheelbase and a longer rear triangle to carry additional cargo. Oh. We interrupt this message for a hummingbird. And I guess that's one of the things I really like about Reese and Mueller. I mean, for those of you who watch this channel, you probably realize that I'm a pretty big fan. I've gotten to meet the founder and actually had to beg them to bring their bikes to the U.S. for a little while. They finally relented, and I think they were pretty happy with that decision. But overall, you know, they make bikes for specific users. They don't just make bikes to fit a pre-existing category. They say, this user wants to use a bike in a certain way. Like, how can we design and make a bike for that purpose? This bike's no different, and the rest of their lineup is like that. I mean, they have a compact bike called a Tinker, and that bike's really great for urban environments where you have tight storage constraints or whatever. The Nevo 3 is a very popular bike. It's a low-step bike, but still has a lot of the more rigid characteristics of the frame that you'll find on a standard diamond frame. I mentioned the Charger, they have the Charger Mix, which basically means it has a like lower top tube. And then they have some full suspension bikes like the Delight is one of their more popular models. It's like the Charger, but with rear suspension. They have the Homage, which is like the Nevo with rear suspension. And then they have some bikes with dual batteries like the Supercharger 2, the Super Delight. Uh, this bike, it's also possible to add a second battery to it as well. Oh, I almost forgot some of their other cargo bikes. The Load, personal favorite bike. I mean, this bike's awesome, but I gotta say, the Load, it's my favorite bike. If you catch me riding, you'll probably see me riding that bike. But nonetheless, they had the Load 60, Load 75. They have a new bike called the Paxter. That's their hardtail front loader cargo bike. So you got the kids in the front as opposed to in the back. It's got different characteristics. This, maybe you have more space constraints. You wanna put it on a standard bike rack. Those front loader cargo bikes, they're not really gonna give you that same capability. An updated bike for this year is called the Roadster, and that bike is really growing in popularity. Kind of more of like an urban type hybrid bike, I guess you can call it. But that bike's good for somebody that wants something a little bit lighter weight, a little bit more nimble, and doesn't necessarily need the wider tires uh, that some of the other models might have. Now, as I mentioned before, the wheels on this bike are 26 inch, which historically was a pretty popular mountain bike size, but these days, actually, more and more tires are going to 27.5. This particular model has the GX upgrade, which is more of an off-road tire. This tire is called the Smart Sam Plus. It's a 26 inch by 2.25. It's pretty rugged, you know, something that's pretty capable for off-road riding. And now, you're not gonna wanna go on like really serious mountain bike trails, but it can handle most things, I think that people wanna get into. But this tire, because it's the plus version, it has really good puncture protection, which is historically not something that you'll generally find in a mountain bike tire. So it's definitely something that's capable on and off-road. If you're riding primarily on-road, you're probably gonna wanna stick with the standard tire that it comes with, that's called the Supermoto X. And that's a 26 inch by 2.4. So a little bit wider than this and a little bit slicker. Some other details you can see here is the suspension fork. Now, this is a air suspension fork, so it's adjustable. It does have a lockout on it. It's a through axle fork made by Suntour. Really plenty capable for this type of bike. You're gonna to wanna to adjust the air based on your weight and you might actually adjust it a little bit based on your cargo as well because you wanna make sure that if you have a lot of cargo and you're braking, you're not really like bottoming the suspension out. Outside of that, you got the fenders. Generally speaking, an off-road bike, you're not really wanting fenders so much because they can rattle and that sort of thing. But these tend to hold up pretty well and they have certain safety features 
which are pretty ideal in an off-road scenario because one of the concerns about having a fender on a bike off-road is that you can get a rock stuck in here and it can produce a dangerous situation. These fenders have these kind of quick release clips here and basically they can pop open if a rock was to get caught in there as to not prevent the wheel from spinning in one of those scenarios. It's not a common thing, but it can happen. And one of the things you might note if you try to check out the drivetrain is that we got these like skirt guards here. So I'm just gonna open this up so you can see it a little bit better, see what we got going on under here. So this particular version is the GT Roll-Off HS, meaning that it has the roll-off hub. This is kind of their top of the line drivetrain, I guess you could say. It's a 14 speed internal hub with electronic shifting. Pretty unique and something you won't find on too many bikes, but Risa Mueller actually offers it on most of their models. It's made in Germany, it's a very high quality system. So you have a very low gear along with a very high gear, which makes it really great for climbing very large hills as well as maintaining a higher speed. Now, another detail you might see, you know, just kind of peeking in here as we have the belt drive. One of the great things about the belt is that you don't have to grease it or lube it or anything like that. So it's really clean. It also lasts significantly longer than a chain does. Now you can also get the belt drive with their other version called the Vario. That's another internally geared hub that's a continually variable transmission. Now we did make videos on both of these transmissions as well as a video kind of comparing all three. While we're down here, I figure I'll just show you some of the optional accessories that are installed on here. You have some different options for carrying passengers. If you're carrying larger passengers, I recommend the passenger kit, but this one is called the safety bar, which is made for smaller children. You can carry two children. You can carry two children just on the pad if they're a little bit larger, or if you wanted, you can carry uh, one child as well as a child in the seat. It adds these running boards here, and these running boards have an interesting uh, kind of feature here where you can actually put a children's bike, you can sit the tire inside of here and strap it on here so you can kind of tow a bike along, which is a really cool feature. For the motor on the bike, we have the Bosch Generation 4 CX as well as the speed motor as options. This one has the speed motor, so it has a top speed of 28 miles an hour and it has 85 newton meters of torque, which is a pretty considerable amount. But as I mentioned, this is a slight upgrade from last year. It has a little bit more torque. It also works a little bit better without assistance, which is a nice feature. So you can pedal the bike really easily with or without power. Something to note about the Bosch system it uses a technology called pedal assist. So basically you ride the bike and it just assists you as you pedal, it makes it easier to go faster, further, longer, etc. It doesn't really take over the full experience, but you can really work as much or as little as you'd like. Inside the motor, they have two sensors. It senses how fast you're pedaling as well as how hard you're pedaling. And with that information, it's able to provide you very predictable power and assist you anywhere from 0% at no assistance, 60% at their lowest level, and upwards of 340% at the top level of assistance, which is pretty significant. So basically, it uses those two sensors, another sensor in the back, and it takes a 1,000 senses per second and you know really you just kind of feel stronger than you are i think that's generally the best way to describe it and for the battery on the bike it comes standard with a 500 watt hour it's sitting right inside here this one actually has a 625 watt hour it's slightly larger and for the standard frame you have an optional additional 500 watt hour battery and you might be wondering what this all means basically the more watt hours the further you can go so the standard 500 watt hour probably get you somewhere between 20 25 miles upwards of of 60 or 70 miles uh, at the lowest level of assistance. 625 is going to bump that up a little bit. And then, you know, if you add that additional 500 watt hour battery, you're going to have nearly double that range. You can charge the battery on the bike through this port here. Use a standard wall outlet. You can also charge the battery off the bike as well. You can remove it with this key. And this key will actually also work with the frame lock that comes standard on the bike. And another cool detail is you can actually get additional locks with the same key as well, which a lot of people tend to do. Just make it a little bit easier to manage multiple locks on the bike with just one key. And depending on what bike you get, you might get a different kickstand. This is kind of the best one for the child option. This is called the Ursus double kickstand. It gives you a good amount of stability, but basically you just push this kickstand up pretty solid there, even for rougher terrain, which is great. 
And coming up to the cockpit, we can see how we actually interact with the system. We can turn this on. This is the Nyon display, which is an optional upgrade. But all the displays are going to give you some of the basic information, like battery life, speed, the range left in the battery, which you'll see once we switch into that, along with certain details like the odometer, the tripometer, trip time, different things like that. Depending on the upgrade, you might get some additional options like this one has, like having a the ability to connect a heart rate monitor, have navigation, uh, cool things like that. So this is the display. This is one of the larger display options available, miles per hour, the time. Uh, this is the assistance level. Currently it's off. If I hit the plus button, we go into the different assistance levels. Now with the 625 watt hour, oh, having 93%, we're showing 88 miles left in range. The thing to note here is that range will actually update based on your specific riding style, terrain, cargo, etc. Then you have the, the battery percentage, you have miles per hour. This particular bike is a roll off, so you can actually see what gear you're in. And you can change the gears up here, so you just go up and down the gears. And you can also change what gear you start out at. So you can start anywhere from gear one to gear nine. Generally, I say starting somewhere around four or five is ideal. You can add custom screens. Here it just has some of the more basic screens available and we could select into them going right or left. You can also use the touch screen function. I don't currently have the map uh, function enabled, but you can set this up and download your local maps. A couple of more in-depth videos about the Nyon display if you want to learn more about that or learn about some of the other display options available. The walk assist you can activate by just tapping this top button here and then uh, just holding the plus button and that will just push it along a couple miles. It just kind of goes like about two, three miles an hour, just enough to make it easier to push a load along or you know push it up a hill or that sort of thing. Light button here, this is for the high beam and low beam. They also have a horn here, which is kind of cool. So we just tap, tap that, pretty loud. Then we also have the mirror, which comes standard on the high-speed bike, and that's a really nice function, something very helpful, and something that people generally want to add to most bikes, particularly if you're riding in traffic or riding along other people. It's good to have a, a quick glance to see what's going on behind you, so that's a nice way to go. These are the Ergon GP1s, really comfortable. The thing about these grips is they provide a really wide like bracing area for your hand, so you don't end up in a situation where if you have a normal kind of narrow grip, it ends up like cutting your circulation off a little bit. It kind of spreads that pressure out and you're less likely to have numbness in your hands or other sort of issues. For the brakes on the bike, you're gonna have the MT4 in the rear and MT5 in the back. These also have brake lights, which is gonna be spec'd on the high-speed bikes. And it's a really nice function. It just allows you to activate the brake light with the lever, so there's a little wire that comes out of here. And I find it's a really nice safety feature to give people good predictability to what you're doing on the bike and that sort of thing. Big fan of Magura brakes. I think they do a great job with these things. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed, you know, checking it out and getting to spend some time on the bike. I think it's a really cool bike. I'm interested to know what your thoughts are. Anything you like about it, don't like about it. Are you considering getting one? And or maybe you have a previous version or even the current version. I think others always appreciate hearing from those that have experience. I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video and uh, see you soon.